Uh, we are going to dive into something that I believe is one of the big critical essentials of faith, and that is hearing the voice of God. I've entitled this morning's message, Hearing the Voice of God. It's one of the most incredible things, and yet for most people, it's one of the most frustrating things is to hear the voice of God. I remember back in the beginning of my journey uh, as a young Christian, I'd only just started following uh, Jesus and going to church. And I'll never forget it because it was Super Bowl Sunday. They put a seminar on. Now, who does that? If you're uh, in the States, you know what I'm talking about. It's like the grand final here or, you know, the final of the state of origin game here, rugby. Uh, the, you know, the Super Bowl is a pretty big deal. And they put this seminar on called Change the World School of Prayer. And a guy named Dick Eastman uh, ran the seminar. And I'll never forget it because I really wanted to watch the Super Bowl. And, you know, one of my favorite teams was in it on that weekend, on that Sunday, uh, but I really wanted to know how to pray, and, and so my conscience got the best of me, and I, I missed the Super Bowl, and I, and I went to the seminar at the church, but the whole time, I wasn't happy. I was thinking to myself, what is wrong with these people? And, and I showed up for the seminar, and I looked around, and I thought, well, no wonder they did it on Super Bowl Sunday, because there's not a person here that, that likes football, and, uh, except for me. And I was you know, in my 20s back then, early 20s. And uh, during that seminar, Dick Eastman said something. He said, when you pray, he said, don't do all the talking. He said, let God talk to you. That was the first time that I'd ever heard somebody say that God could actually talk to you. And I remember, I, I was like gobstruck. I was like, you're kidding me. Like, the Almighty One <laughs> is going to talk to me? Like, wow. And I was so excited, and, and, and yet uh, almost like disbelief that that could actually happen. And I'll never forget because he never explained how God talks to you. So thus began a very frustrating uh, segment of my life or journey, if you will. And it was trying to hear the voice of God. And I, I was left to my own devices on that one. So I remember I, I went home and I, I was so excited because I went in my bedroom, which was the, my prayer closet place where I prayed. And, and I said to God, okay, God, like this is your chance. Like, uh, you know, I'm not going to talk at all. I'm just going to say, thank you. Talk to me. Uh, so I didn't want to take up God's time. And I'll never forget because I didn't hear anything. No voices. You know, I was expecting maybe something like Charleston Heston in, uh, you know, the Ten Commandments and Moses. Ed, this is me. <laughs> Nothing. And I, and I got so frustrated. Then I thought to myself, well, maybe I'm thinking too much. Maybe it's the fact that I'm not talking uh, that's stopping me from hearing God. But maybe it's the fact that uh, I'm just thinking too many thoughts. And so I thought... I'm going to stop thinking and let God fill my mind. If that's the way God wants to do it, okay, I can play that. Have you ever tried not to think? <laughs> some of you go, yes. It comes easy, I guess, for some people. Uh, <laughs> if, if, unless you're dead. Uh, you can't not think. <laughs> you can't not think a thought. It's impossible. You're thinking right now. And uh, I'm thinking right now. And I was thinking... Okay, God, like, what am I supposed to do? Now, at that time, I was very committed as a, a new Christian. I was committed to Sunday school. I, was, I would teach in Sunday school. I also had a ministry going into nursing homes uh, called it Last Chance Ministries because if they didn't get it then, chances are they were never going to get it. <laughs> and uh, Mrs. Peterson, one of my mentors, she played the organ. And, uh, and I talked to these people that were heavily anesthetized and uh, did They'd fall asleep while I was talking. Uh, it was a crazy time, but I was very committed. And I kind of felt God owed me one. I don't know if that's ever happened to you where you thought, uh, you know, I've, I've been so committed to you, God, your turn. <laughs> you know, I, 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 was, I, was, uh, I was so committed, yet so frustrated because God wasn't talking. So I'll never forget, I got up on my bed. This is crazy, I know. 
Uh, no, none of you have ever done anything stupid uh, as a new Christian. But I got up on my bed and I said, okay, this is me talking to the one that created the universe. And I said, if you don't talk to me, I'm gonna give you five minutes, five minutes. If I, if I don't hear your voice in five minutes, the whole deal's off. No more Sunday school for you. No, you can find somebody else to go there and preach and listen to Mrs. Peterson play the organ and, and watch all these old people fall asleep. You find somebody else to do this. I'm, I'm not putting up with it. If you don't talk to me, I was so frustrated that so you got five minutes and I was timing it. The five minutes came and five minutes went and I heard nothing. And I'll never forget that. I, 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 I had committed myself that the whole thing was off. I went back to that church, Skyline Wesleyan Methodist Church in Lemon Grove, California. <laughs> I went back to that church, it was a big church, about a thousand people. And I said to all of my mentors and everybody at that church that I knew, mostly older people, I said, I'm not coming back. And I sat in the pew and I wept, literally cried. I was just cut. And, I, and I'll never forget, I said, if this thing is make-believe, I'm out of there, I'm out of here. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna give my life for a fairy tale. <laughs> you know, I don't do make-believe. And my friends have been calling me up like every Friday, Saturday night, you know, party, party, party. And I'd given all that up. I'd sit by myself with a Bible, reading my Bible on a, on a weekend. Uh, quite frankly, I was pretty lonely. Uh, I didn't have any young Christian friends at the time. And, and I'll never forget, I, I, I thought to myself, well, I wonder if I'll go back and party uh, and do all the stuff that I did before I started coming to church. And, and I'll never forget the thought was, well, no, I wouldn't do that. That's stupid. I, I've really enjoyed not getting drunk and no hangovers and no guilt and all the rest of it. You know, it didn't take more than a, a week or so. And I was back worse than ever before. Uh, to put it mildly, I backslid, I went away from God for the better part of two and a half years. Uh, I was away from God, and I was worse off than before. I went through probably the darkest chapter uh, of my life. It was like traveling through this dark tunnel with no way out. There's no God. There's no void. No, he didn't talk to me. This, is, this isn't true. This is make-believe. And, and, and so the whole journey for me was one of total frustration, and yet... I'd find myself out at a, at a bar and uh, people would come up to me and they'd start talking and I'd start sharing Jesus with them. <laughs> Figure that, you know, here I am like knocking back beers and everything and it's like some, somebody start telling me their woes and all their problems. I say, well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, 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 you need Jesus. And then I think, what the heck am I talking about? Like, <laughs> The one that I've walked away from that let me down, that won't talk to me, that I'm doubting whether he even exists, and I'm telling him all about Jesus, and you know, you need to get yourself in church next week, and all the rest of it. It was like I was a walking contradiction, not really knowing which way to go. I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's totally, totally frustrating. Well, I determined, and it was a series of events that, uh, that got me back on track. It was actually a tele-evangelist. Some, some people bag tele-evangelists, not me. If it wasn't for a tele-evangelist, I would have never probably come back to God. And I remember getting up, watching this guy on television, and he was sharing about the Holy Spirit, and he was also sharing about how God talks to you. And, and I'm like, well, they never taught me that. What's this Holy Spirit? Like, well, and, uh, and, and I found myself back in church again, not that church, but another church. I found myself back on track with God through uh, an absolute miracle because I honestly thought there's just no hope for me. I'll never find my way back. Uh, God's grace has run out or whatever. I, I don't see any, any way that I could possibly start uh, worshiping God, believing in God or anything like that. But God makes a way where there is no way. That song that we sang about, you are good, you are good. And the one before that, uh, you know, the dry bones rattling and coming back together. That was me. I was dead as bones. And yet God resurrected something through his power. Now, I want to share this morning on hearing the voice of God. 
because I believe that it's, it's, it's just so important. It's one of the most important things, if not the most important elements, if you will. I, I said that as far as faith goes. I don't know that there's anything more important uh, about faith. And we're in a series called Faith Formation. And uh, we do need to know how does God speak? And, and, uh, and when God speaks, how do we know that it's God? I met a deaf person once. In fact, I've met a few deaf people in my lifetime. And uh, when I was working in Tulsa, I ended up going to Bible college. And when I was in Tulsa, I worked at a hotel called the Camelot Hotel. I don't think it's open anymore. And, um, but I was in the foyer of that particular hotel. And there was a man, he was uh, an older man. He was walking around the foyer and he was making funny noises, like whimpering noises, like, you know. And, and, and uh, nobody knew what to do with the guy. They thought, well, this guy's a bit crazy. What are we going to do? He wants to check in, but he doesn't have any money. And, uh, and I recognized the noise that he was making because I also had some deaf friends uh, from my college days, uh, that, who I'll talk about in a minute. But uh, I recognized the whimpering noise was his, him trying to talk, but it just sounded different. There's something about somebody that can't hear that they also can't speak quite, quite normally as, as you can when you hear. And I recognized, I thought, he's deaf. That's what his problem is. So they're all like, what are we going to do with this guy? So I walked up to this guy, and, uh, and I started lip syncing, and, 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 uh, you know, and he understood. And then he got, I got him a, a pen and a, a paper, and he wrote down that he was actually in Tulsa because Oral Roberts University and hospital is uh, in Tulsa, and that they made an offer that if you couldn't afford to go to the hospital, if, if you could make your way to Tulsa, they would pay your hospital expenses they would admit you for free and pay for your accommodation. So there he was at our hotel, and he said, uh, Oral Roberts had said that on television. And so I rang up Oral Roberts University. They say, yep, absolutely, that's a promise. We will admit him into the hospital. But nobody knew what to do with the guy because nobody recognized his voice, and he was totally frustrated. If you can't hear... It must be a very, very frustrating thing. I don't know if you've ever been in a big room where there's a lot of noise and you're trying to talk with somebody and if you got hearing problems, it's just really frustrating because you don't know what they're saying. In fact, you'll find yourself like uh, laughing at jokes or things that you think is funny. Maybe it's not even funny. You're just guessing what the person is saying. I don't want to have to guess when it comes to the things of God. I don't want to have to uh, make something up when it comes to the things of God. You need to hear God's voice. I want you to go with me over to Romans 10, 17. And this is one of the most famous scriptures. I, I really encourage you to put it to memory. And, um, and it shows the relationship between hearing the voice of God and faith. You know, the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God because you first must, must believe that God exists and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So if you're passionate and you're diligently seeking God and you believe that God exists, then you need something called faith because it's impossible to please God without it. Romans 10, 17, listen to this. So then faith comes. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing. If you cannot hear, you cannot have faith. Call it something else. I hear people all the time, you know, I'm, we're stepping out on faith. I say, oh, God spoke to you. You got a word from God on buying a house or maybe enter, entering a relationship or whatever it is. And they go, well, no, God didn't speak to us. But we're stepping out in faith. I think we'll call it risk. A lot of business people risk everything. They put their money on the line, but they don't hear from God. Uh, necessarily, especially non-believers, but don't call it faith unless you've heard from God, because faith comes by hearing. Now, how do you hear? And hearing by the Word of God. Now, here is, here is the way that this works, that as you're reading the Word of God and meditating upon Scripture in your Bible, then your ears 
who, which are plugged or deaf, if you will, they get unplugged or your, your spiritual ears get healed. As soon as you become a believer, you start to get the thought flow of God flowing through you through the word of God and, and your ears come alive. Faith comes by hearing, but, but the ability to hear itself, the, the, the hearing ability, if you will, itself comes by the word of uh, of God. That's why it's so important to start with the Word of God. Start getting into the Bible. Start meditating on God's scriptures. The Psalms are fantastic. Proverbs, uh, you know, just start somewhere. Your ability to hear comes from the Word of God. Then faith comes once you can hear. Now, uh, I, I can't uh, say enough about this, but there are a lot of voices in the world that are going to speak to you. And it's a very dangerous thing to hear voices that aren't from God is a very dangerous thing. I mean, mental institutions are full of people like that. When I, you know, backslid and went back into doing drugs and things, I would, I would hear things, but it wasn't God. You know, very real things uh, to, to me at the time. And, and it's, it's so important that you realize that the, the Word of God is the basis. If what you're hearing doesn't line up with what God has written, throw it away. It's, it's, it's not coming from God. And, and uh, in fact, when, uh, when uh, Jesus asked Peter, you know, who do men say that I am? And he said, some say. Some say that you're Elijah. Some say that you're Jeremiah or John the Baptist. I, I don't know how they pull that one off, or, you know, reincarnated, but he's already old, older than Jesus. Like, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> you know, some say. If you go by what some say, you're going to go off a cliff with, with some. If you go by what they say all the time, people are all the time, well, you know, people are saying, or, or they say that and then fill in the blank. The economy's crashing, the world's coming to an end. Look, conspiracy theorists all over the place go to the internet, you know, look at stuff. If it, it, It's just all over the place. If you're listening to all of that and not listening to what God is saying through his word, you're going to end up in disaster. In Hebrews chapter 6, 13, it says, uh, when God made his promise to Abraham, he sa it says, God made his promise to Abraham since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself. There is not, no word higher than the word of God. God is the final authority. God sent his son, the living word, into the world so that we have a foundation to stand on, to, to, to get our ears open and to know whether the voice beyond that is God or not God. God couldn't give any greater assurance than himself. So when God speaks, truth is coming forth. Absolute truth. There's nothing that God uh, has written or, who, or, or God has said that is not absolute truth. Thy word is truth. It's light. God says that. It's, it's, it's the, uh, the assurance that you need to have. God's word is his bond. And, and without that, you cannot have faith. So then faith comes by hearing. So people hear news about the economy. Perhaps you're here right now and the doctor's giving you a bad report. Doesn't mean that you don't take note of that report, but there's another report. Who has believed this report, the scripture says? Some people listen to gossip about other people instead of having faith and believing that God's working in that person. They take the other side of the enemy and, and they believe the worst about that person. And so relationships, churches are split, uh, relationships, marriages, whatever. Sometimes fear will enter in. You know, fear, somebody said, is uh, uh, false evidence appearing is real. So fear enters into their heart. The voice of fear is very loud. Now I had, a, in college, we had, uh, myself and, and some friends of mine, we had these deaf friends that uh, lived on a lake called Belleville Lake. And uh, I met my friend Curtis and his wife, uh, Mary. I met Curtis at a chemical factory uh, where I was working at the time. And so K Curtis loved to take all of his water skiing because he had a boat right on the lake, a nice boathouse and this boat. He just loved taking his water skiing. He looked like Colonel Sanders. He had like a ball cap, had a cigar that he smoked and uh, you know, the whole beard and the whole deal like Colonel Sanders and would pull us around the lake. And, uh, but he couldn't hear. And my friends and I at the time, this is pre-Christian days, 
I was a rat bag. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tell you straight out. I was <laughs> actually, you know, serving the devil. I was not a nice guy, and my friends were just as naughty as me. And we took advantage of the fact that Curtis and his wife couldn't hear. So we got these M80s. They're uh, an eighth of a stick of dynamite. I mean, these things are, <laughs> if you light one off, you know. And Kurt would be pulling one of us behind on water skis, and the other guy would be riding shotgun. And so it was up to the guy riding shotgun to, to say, you know, speed up the boat or, or slow the boat down. And so whatever the guy skiing would say, you know, like, slow the boat down, like, like that. Of course, being friends, we'd say, hey, he wants to go faster. <laughs> And so, you know, so Kurt would, you know, put the throttle down and we'd be going so fast and, you know, the guy's freaking out back there. But then one of the other mates would be taking one of these M80s, lighting it like depth charges and tossing it at the friend that was water skiing. So you'd be like, you know, trying to dodge that thing, boom, you know, water everywhere. And, uh, you know, it was just a fun, wild time. But then we started uh, lighting them off at the dinner table, like Curtis and his wife, she'd fix us a nice meal, and we were rat bags, okay, I, I, I admit that. Uh, but what happened, because Kurt and his wife couldn't hear, we forgot that the neighbors could hear. <laughs> and so what Kurt didn't hear, the neighbors told Kurt <laughs> what they could hear. Like, what the heck is going on at your house? with these guys showing up over there, we hear like these huge explosions and you know, loud music and yelling and screaming and you know, all the stuff going on. And, and if you can't hear, somebody else is gonna give you the words. Somebody else is gonna tell you what they're hearing if you can't hear. It's so important that you hear. The neighbors told on us. And uh, we, were, we were totally, totally um, exposed. I heard about this guy, and he was really old, and he went into the doctors to get uh, a new hearing aid, and he got this state-of-the-art, incredible hearing aid that took his hearing up to 100%. And he walked out of there, and three months later, he came in for a checkup. The doctor said to him, man, like, this is incredible. Like, your hearing is perfect. Your family must be really excited. And he says, well, actually, he says, I haven't told my family. He says, I've just been listening to the conversations and uh, I've changed my will three times. <laughs> First Corinthians 14 and verse 10, listen to this. It says, uh, there are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world and none of them is without significance or signification. So there's voices of compromise that are gonna talk to you, young people, old people, discouragement. There's the voice of reason that will talk you right out of your blessing. That doesn't make any sense. You know, God spoke to me before things that don't make any sense. How much sense did it, did it make uh, some of the things that God told people to do in the Bible? Go lay on your side for six months or whatever, then flip over. Like go dip in the, in the Jordan seven times, you'll be healed from leprosy name. And like uh, all stuff, it defies reason. Some of the things that God will say to you, your brain will reject that. There's the voice of wisdom, however, which is incredible. There's the voice of your past. Well, you're just a stuff up. All your relatives were stuff ups. They were losers. You're, you're going to be a loser too. It's all generational, you know, so there's no hope for you. There's the voice of your conscience, which you better follow. There's the voice of guilt. There's the voice of, uh, of rejection. There's the voice of regret. And yes, there is the voice of the devil. Hearing and believing another voice can have devastating consequences on your life. It's not just that you won't have this thing called faith, but you can actually lose your life or have catastrophe by hearing the wrong voice. I remember after I came back to that particular church in San Diego, um, I met this guy in a wheelchair. 
And uh, we were on a, uh, I think I gave him a ride home or something anyway, we were, um, we were driving down Highway 8, and I said to him, I said, how did you lose your, your legs? Thinking maybe he was born that way. And he goes, it's very interesting, he says, I was actually driving on, on this very highway, you know, he headed uh, east. And he said, I heard this voice. It was a really nice voice. And it said, can I have your legs? And I said, yes, God, you can have my legs. And he said, the next thing I'd swerved off the road, the car was tumbling, and, and when I woke up, I was paralyzed from the waist down. And I thought to myself, I didn't have the heart to tell him, but I thought to myself, that's not the voice of God. That's not the God that I serve that would cripple you. I, I think the God that... Uh, that I serve anyway would want to have his legs walking so he can go on the mission field and do something. I'm not saying that God can't use a person that's crippled, but God's not the author of sickness and disease. God never puts sickness and disease on anybody. And, and that's a fact. And you can go through your scriptures and you have to make something up to get there. God's not, God doesn't put sickness on people, then turn around and heal them so he can be the hero. That would be twisted. And God doesn't do that. Uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how Jesus of Nazareth went about doing good and healing all who were sick and oppressed of the devil. God is not the author of sickness and disease, but that voice was, was so beautiful and so convincing that this guy heard that thing and somehow, I don't know how, he lost control of that car and ended up paralyzed. Can I have your legs? Yes, God, I'll have, uh, you can have my legs walking, thank you. Uh, and uh, John chapter 10, verse 30, 27, or I'll just give you a few scriptures here. My sheep listen to my voice. This is Jesus talking. I know them. They follow me. Are you a sheep? Are you a follower of Jesus Christ? Well, then his sheep listen to his voice. Matthew 4, 4, Jesus answered, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, now here's how you live, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That word proceeds is in the ever-present tense. It means this. It means by every word that is continually proceeding out of the mouth of God. It's not a once only. It's not just, uh, you know, read my Bible last night, didn't hear anything. God wants to speak to you every day. He wants fellowship. That's what it means to follow Jesus, to be a believer. That's how uh, faith issues forth. Uh, Peter said this to the Lord in Matthew 14, 28, 29. He said, Lord, he, he sees Jesus walking on the water. He says, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come. Tell me to come to you on the water. One word. Jesus said one word, and it issued enough faith for Peter to walk on water he said, come. Then Peter got down out of the boat and he walked on water and he came toward Jesus. Jesus uh, another time, Peter jumped out of the boat without a word from God and sank with his overcoat on. <laughs> In Luke chapter 9, 35, a voice came from the cloud. This is when Jesus is transfigured with uh, Moses and Elijah. He sees them, they're, they're lit up like, like the noonday sun. And, and, and John and James are there, and, and Peter goes, let's build, let's build some tabernacles, some tents. This is amazing. Look at, you know, let, we could have a party. Like, this is incredible. And, and Peter's, while Peter's talking, a voice comes from the cloud. It says, this is my son whom I have chosen. Listen to him. In other words, shut up, Peter, and hear what he has to say. Now, obviously, some of us talk way too much. And I'm going to give you three things on how to uh, hear the voice of God. These are simple things that I learned uh, a long time ago by uh, a man named Pastor Mark Verkler, I think his name was. And, um, and, and I believe that these things will really help you. I don't know why my iPad just keeps scrolling right down to the bottom of the page here when I walk away, but in any event, I want to give you these things uh, because you need to be able to hear from God. And the first one is look, 
look. Now, I know this doesn't make any sense because we're talking about hearing. And I just said, look. Habakkuk 2, I want to read 1 to 4. This is like a key breakthrough scripture on hearing the voice of God and how this works. And most people don't equate hearing with seeing. But listen to this. I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart, the wall. And listen, and watch to see what he will say. What? <laughs> if I said to you, hey, come and look at this. <laughs> listen. <laughs> but I'm telling you to look. Watch to see what he will say to me. And I will answer when I am corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision down, make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision, that's what you see, is yet for an appointed time, but at the end, it, the vision, what you see, will speak. It will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Oh, that's so frustrating. Oh, I just don't have the patience for this. Ah, oh, come on, God. Like, say something. Say something. And he's going, look at what I'm showing you. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, again, see the proud. His soul is not upright in him. Oh, and I love this. In case there's any doubt that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, the just shall live by faith. Let me unpack that a little bit. But hearing is often seeing. There is a saying, and I've often rejected it. I go, oh, it's not true. And it's this. And you've heard it before, too. Seeing is believing. I just go, no, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> it can be. It's not just seeing uh, the result of what you prayed for, I'm not going to believe it until I see the manifestation. Now, that's not correct. But, but in the sense that what God wants to show you, seeing is believing. I'll put it this way. You have an imagination because you're made in God's image. God created you with the ability to see pictures, to think in pictures, to see things in your mind's eye. You, your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall even dream dreams, it says, with the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2. You have the ability to see things, to dream things, to think things through, to uh, see what's going on through your mind's eye. God wants to speak to us through that. It's a major way that God speaks, and yet we're taught that's evil, that's of the devil, you know, your imagination. And so we yield that to Netflix. We yield it to every dark thing that comes our way. People are seeing all the bad things, all the doom, all the gloom. They're so busy uh, with their sight being captured. They're a little bit like Samson, uh, who the Philistines plucked his eyes out so that he couldn't see. He's feeling his way around now, and he's lost his power, and God wants to give you the power power back, take back what the ground that the enemy is stealing and robbing from you. And for goodness sakes, if it's not edifying, if God can't speak through you, cut it off, turn it off, throw it away. I talked with somebody last night who's not doing Facebook or Instagram at all. They just totally unplugged the whole thing. You know what I said? I applaud that because they found that a major distraction in their life. Their sight was taken up with that. So they had the sense to cut it off. To not, if your right eye offends thee, pluck it out, Jesus says. Not literally, but it's better, he says, to go, go into heaven with one eye than to go to hell with both eyes. <laughs> if, if, if your right hand offends you, cut it, cut it off. What's he saying? Chop off anything that's blinding you, that's taken up your sight. Look. Keep on looking. Make sure that you stop. That's the first word I'm going to give you, actually, before you look. Stop and pause and listen and be still. Still your heart so that you can then see what God wants to show you so that you can hear what God wants to say to you. 
through his word, through your imagination, through everything that you have. When you read the word of God, people go, oh, you know, I, I struggle to read the word of God. Sometimes I read the word of God, I fall asleep. I don't know what it is. I can watch, this isn't me talking, but somebody. Uh, I can watch Netflix. I can be watching a movie. I can be doing anything. But as soon as I start reading my Bible, I just fall asleep. Perhaps that's you and you're uh, here or you're listening right now. And the reason for that is because the word of God is meant to be meditated. It's God's thoughts towards you. People that were anointed by the Holy Spirit wrote that down. They got their imagination sanctified. They heard what God was saying. They wrote it down like Habakkuk says. And if that's you, God wants you to get into his word. Have a coffee if you have to, but get into his word so that God's thought flow is going through you. You start to think like God. And when you start to think like God, of course, you'll hear what God has to say. If your thought life is contrary to the word of God and God's thoughts, which he gave you a whole book on, uh, if your thought life is contrary to that, then you're not going to be able to hear his voice. I can be in a room uh, with a thousand people in that room. And if my wife is talking, I will hear her. It was uncanny. Same thing with our son growing up. It could be, we could be at Disneyland and there's all these voices, all this noise. And as soon as our son would, would yell or whatever, it'd be like, boom, I, I could hear his voice out of all the others. You will hear the one that you love. You will hear your ears become sensitive to the voices of those who are dear to you in your life. So stop and then look. Start to look and then listen. Stop, look, listen. We were taught that as children before you cross the road. Stop, look both ways, right? Listen, see if there's a car coming, and then step off the curb and, and cross the street. Stop, look, listen. It's pretty simple. And, and, and God will start to speak to you, and you will start to hear God's voice. It's interesting that the people in the Old Testament uh, times that could hear the voice of God, prophets, they were actually called seers, not hearers. They were called seers. They would take what they saw, and then they would share that with the nation, whatever that was. We need to repent. Uh, we need, don't be, af don't be afraid about this army coming up, no matter uh, what it is. So stop, look, and listen. Pay attention. Proverbs 20 won't read it. We're out of time. I'd like the team to come back up. My son, pay attention to what I say to you, Proverbs 4.20. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them, listen to this, verse 21. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them in your heart, for they are life to those who find them, health to the whole body. And he goes on there. Set aside quality time so that you can actually look and listen and let God speak to your heart. This is not hard. I think people make it hard. It's honestly not hard. It's very natural. I think that we're throwing stuff in there to make it hard. So in closing, God wants, God is speaking to you. God wants you to hear what he has to say by seeing what he wants to show you. He doesn't usually speak audibly like we're speaking right now because it takes too long, quite honestly. He, he'll drop uh, so much wisdom in a nanosecond into uh, your sanctified imagination, your spirit, uh, and he will honestly show you whatever it is that right now you're walking blind in. So I want you to close your eyes with me right now as um, we're just about out of time. But um, what is it right now that you just wish you could hear from God on? Perhaps you're like me, you're going down uh, like I was, going through a dark tunnel. You're thinking, oh man, I just can't see my way out of this situation. Could be financial, could be a relationship problem, uh, could be at work, a business uh, that you're in. Whatever it is, it may not be earth shaking, but it might be quite a critical thing in your life right now. If you would just push pause and stop, take time out, go for a walk, be still and know that I'm God. He says, I believe that God will then show you something if you will look at that and then you will listen 
you'll find that God will sort out situations in your life that you've tried and tried and tried. If you're here right now, before I pray for, um, for you to hear, I want you to hear this. Jesus Christ came to save you. He came to seek and save that which was lost. So I want to give you this opportunity right now to ask Jesus into your heart. If you're watching online or if you're here, I'm just going to pray a prayer. If you want to say this prayer after me and mean it in your heart, then you shall be saved. And that's the starting point right there of wisdom and of hearing from God. So just say this. We're all going to say this together. Say this with me. Say, Dear God, I thank you for sending your son, your word, into my life. Jesus, I give you my heart. Amen. Look, if you prayed that prayer that you need to walk differently, you can walk out of here different than you came in, you are saved right now. Just before we go from uh, online, I want to pray for those uh, people right now to hear. Father, I thank you right now as uh, everyone gets in and starts to read your word and takes time uh, out. I thank you right now, Father, that ears are going to be healed and open. The ability to hear, even for those that have gone deaf to your word, you will restore their hearing and restore their sight. Right now, situations being sorted out, problems, dilemmas that had no answers, answers are coming and i thank you right now in jesus name amen god bless you we'll see you next week online and uh, thank you